Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe. You know, today I thought we'd walk down a lane, something uh, to do with technology. Let me tell you why, folks. You've got to remember that when I was governor of the state of Hawaii, we didn't even have an internet. Can you imagine a time like that? And yet, starting with the Governor Burns, Governor Ariyoshi and myself and all every governor since then, we've been talking about the day when we create a high technology industry for the state of Hawaii. Well, I thought today it would be interesting if we talk to a couple of people who know something about the state of the technology business in Hawaii. And so, first of all, a well-known CEO of uh, my boss, in a sense, at here, at, <laughs> here at Hawaii uh, Tech, and, and uh, Jay Fidel. And Jay, you have introduced me to a guest, and so why don't you uh, tell us who our third person is? Okay, our third person is Dave Stevens. Uh, he's with uh, what, Kapilano Community College, am I get that right? Yeah, he did, yeah. Well, more he's importantly... He's a host of... of, of uh, what? Yeah, good. Yeah, host of uh, cyber, cyber underground, cyber underground, <laughs> and he has a show on Think Tech, and he's talking about cyber underground all the time. So, so, and we have a very rich offering in that area. Yeah, yeah I, I, I couldn't. I, I'm excited about this because just the very name of your show, Cyber Underground, <laughs> right. tells us that there may be a revolution going on someplace. There is separate from. Yeah. What all the government may be doing? Oh, no, oh, certainly. Yeah, oh, the, with the government, multiple layers. This is a multiple layer cake. You know, oh, really? you, you can't just divide it up one or two pieces. Uh, everybody's taking a piece of it. And and cyber right now, we're on the the, we're in the Pacific Rim. We're centered right in the middle of the Pacific right now, and we're at the vanguard of the assault if we get attacked by any of our hostile neighbors in cybersecurity. So we train for that eventuality. We train cybersecurity workers here in Hawaii. The state of uh, cybersecurity right now, this is zero percent unemployment rate. So our, our kids walk out with a two-year degree, they're almost guaranteed a job. Um, as well, I promote entrepreneurship. So there is, there is something going on. Things are happening. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you don't feel it in terms of the, you know, the, go the legislative support for it. I don't feel that, I must admit. I don't feel a lot of legislative support in that area. It seems like uh, uh, people have different priorities at this time. Yeah, uh, well, is it because the private sector may be doing it all on its own, or, or why? I think it has to at this time. You know, uh, big vendors, Sony Pictures, Target, uh, um, Home Depot, they all get hacked and they lose billions of dollars. So people know that they have to protect themselves on their own. So cybersecurity has become a burgeoning industry across the world, not just the United States. And in Hawaii, we've heavily focused on it. We had a Department of Labor grant that helped us uh, at the University of Hawaii Community College System distribute about $10 million for cybersecurity curriculum and training programs over the last three years. And we've, we've implemented that. Now we're starting to get our first generation of cyber warriors going out there working for DOD, NSA, CIA, FBI, and and they're getting full ride scholarships for the last two years. This is absolutely amazing, Jay. Mm. You know, by the way, this is so new to mm. me. You can jump in any time, but let me tell you my own. I'm, I'm thinking back as okay. you sit here. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, doing something about cybersecurity. I myself has probably been hacked at least twice. You know, <laughs> mostly because I walked into the trap. Mm. You know, somebody yeah. calls me up on the telephone and tells me such and such is happening, and at least now I know enough and having suffered enough, you know, you got to wait like weeks to get your credit card back or right. something. And anyway, this is the state, the state, my relationship with all of this starts with the, uh, the state, <laughs> this is technology. You, you need to understand this, okay? I come into office in 1986. I get elected, I was lieutenant governor. I am going to inherit this beautiful new investment in technology that my predecessor, Governor Ryoshi, had just done when he spent millions of dollars to get the best Wang machines. Oh, the mainframes. 
Yeah. <laughs> the best Wang word processors oh, okay. that we have ever seen. You're really dating yourself, John. <laughs> I, I know. So you got to remember. And what happened was within six months, you know, nobody was using Wang or so. I mean, during the course of my, because technology had changed so fast. And by the time I, I, me, I'm leaving office, um, we, we, uh, they, they want, uh, the, the, my staff proposes to put a computer, which is this huge, monstrous thing, on my desk in my office to set me up for email to my directors, okay? <laughs> and the thing about it is the email connection was one person to another, one wire, apparently, one, 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 like this. And so, you know, and that's the, well, I get the justification back then, well, outside of the fact that that was the level of technology, was that, that was security, you know, because you only could get to one person ostensibly. Now we have all of these exciting things happening in my telephone. I receive now, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 emails a day. Most of it, by the way, are not exactly appreciated. <laughs> Most of it is because my wife or somebody talked me into doing buying something online. And now you're on a list. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I can see where we went. The technology, we increased so much, but at the same time, we exposed ourselves. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's been your experience? You actually worked in all of this, kept up. Yeah, I was the chair of the High Tech Development Corporation, now known as the Hawaii Tech Development Corporation. Yeah, you guys got kicked out. Adam and Noah Innovation Center? Yeah, we, yeah. We, uh, I shouldn't say we because I'm not associated with it anymore, but uh, I understand that, that it lost its position there and it has to leave. It had a 25-year position, kind of a sandwich and now uh, the university wanted it to leave and legislature didn't protect it and so it has to go. It's not going immediately, but it's, it's losing its position there. And it well, no does, longer has a home. Does it, has it lost its purpose? I mean, is it viable? A HTDC? Or? Yeah. I hope so. Uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's also a bill that's sitting on the governor's desk right now that would have a, a really negative effect on HTDC. One of them, uh, one aspect of it is that it would merge HTDC with HSDC. Remember the Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation, and right. and also kind of like defund it. Um, and, and oh, so it, they would transfer the responsibilities, but not the not the money. Something like that, yeah. And 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 uh, if Governor Ige signs that, if he signs that, that'll be probably the end. Well, if he if he if he vetoes it, that would be good. Well, the exciting thing that we were talking about earlier had to do with cybersecurity. Now we're getting much more basic. Well, I think Dave was talking about the people who at Capilano Community College and other schools in the, in the state. Who who study cybersecurity, which is a hot uh, area, yeah, it's and, absolutely and get necessary. jobs mostly with the federal government, and they right. do pretty well. But well, in terms also with my local bank and everybody else, do they do they get jobs at local banks? Rarely, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. They should. They should. However, our banks, I've got to say, our banks are, are lagging behind, and they do uh, uh, homegrown training from within, which mm -hmm. I think um, can pr promote you know inclusiveness in the bank, but also. Uh, it, it prevents people from outside the corporation coming in and giving new blood and new life. Okay, so there is this whole new industry of cybersecurity that we, we, we just got, we touched on. But dealing with the, the, the uh, what, you know, I can never remember these acronyms, but the uh, high tech. Uh, HTDC, let's HTDC, call it HTDC, yeah. you know, it was formed years ago, uh, right, actually, you know, yeah, let me we put there. my hand up. Yeah. To do to create the kind of industry eventually, where uh, as Art was saying, where um, kids just get hired, there, would, there is in fact a place for them to go. So, is that mission has that mission been accomplished? Jay? No, I mean, but then why are we uh, doing all of these? Uh, We're not doing anything. Actually, really, right? The well, no, you, kicked the, you, you know, kicked remember the Act 221, which existed through the through the first uh, decade. Oh, of the, the tax exemption for high tech it was, corporations. It was a area. tax in, in investment right, right, right. Uh, credit for a, high, a refundable credit for the high tech development, high tech investment for the high tech 
Industry. Industry. Yeah, we right. phased it out. And, yeah. and uh, it, was, it was forced to uh, sunset before its sunset date. Linda Lingle pounded on it every day, every week, every year, and blew it up. And in the process, and this, is, this has happened in other initiatives in the state, it became toxic. So everybody began to characterize these tech kids, these uh, entrepreneur kids, as uh, spoiled. Uh, as um, not going anywhere, as not worth government support and all that. And not only did the, did the statute end prematurely, but um, people were really, really discouraged. A lot of coders left town in 2010 when, when the bill was uh, sunsetted before its time. So the, the reality today, and since then, the ledge has done little or nothing to support technology in Hawaii. That's my so opinion. So since 2010, I mean, two, 2010, not 2010, but 2010, there really hasn't been a real high-tech initiative? None. No. 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 And, and well, if you go back to John that's Burns. That's amazing for people like me. If you go back because, to John I mean, Burns. Because, we dreamed of this. It's happening. counterintuitive, too, and it, to, to know that technology is taking over the planet. And yeah, well, it looks like it's and we're doing not keeping all up, well yeah. right here, but, uh, you know, I was wondering whether or not um, any of this, because, well, we still have the high technology park at Keoholi uh, on the big island. Oh, NELHA? Yeah, with the uh, N NELFA? NELFA? The Na Natural Energy Laboratory, Laboratory. of Hawaii. Yeah. yeah, and isn't that supposed to be a, some kind of a high tech? It's mostly thing? about energy, but they also do tech. I was out there making a movie. Uh, Late last year, and they and they're they're trying to encourage uh, pitch fests. Has, have they received the support that the uh, the others have not? Well, they, they do it on their own on their own budget, so to speak. They're a part of DBED. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, the problem is that this was all organized. Uh, you know, from John Burns on forward, including your right, administration. Right, right. No, I mean, I created that thing that just you, yeah. you said it was going to be, uh, yeah. if the governor signed the bill, it would disappear. Yeah. So it was a way to deal with the closure of the plantations. It was a way to deal with the fact that we only had one significant economy emerging, namely hotels and mm. hospitality and tourism. It was a way to uh, keep, keep the kids here. It was a way to give them better salaries uh, so that they could better, I should say, compensation, because a lot of this is about building your own business rather than being employed, either by the federal or state government or by industry. Well, but it's building a different your own kind business. of world. It's a different kind of world. In fact, even the unionization that went on, one of some of the opposition to some of these things uh, came because it, the people were afraid that they might be uh, non-union labor going on, but uh, the unions have evolved to the point that even in, uh, in Silicon Valley, where they travel, your union membership travels with you as an individual as opposed to with you as an employee of a company. We're going to see some changes now, I think, because I'm not sure Janice is going to go well for us in the Supreme Court. Yeah. If you guys would be keeping up with that case, so that that's the case where you, it's mandatory that you contribute to the union, even though you're not a part of the union. So everybody has uh, pays their fair share. But I, I think with our new conservative leaning Supreme Court, I think that's going to go away. And There's I think a good chance it's going gonna, it's gonna to dethrone the unions, and we're going to have to make up for it somehow. So I, I do. I promote entrepreneurship in my well, students, so that, they go out and the start dream. their own business. Well, also, the fact is that, we, you know, we want, what is it now, 10 million tourists are coming to Hawaii? I mean, when I was way back in my time, when it was, and that was considered some of the boom years, you know, we were barely scratching 7 million. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, at, at what point does the industry just get too big to be, uh, you know, to be viable? Well, I mean, the other thing is, 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 is whether it's really sustainable in the face oh, of... Right, yeah, sustainable is a better word you know, than viable. And, it, and if things go wrong for any reason, look what happened after 9-11, you know, it, it collapses on a dime. Or and, if and the if United nothing, Airlines has a strike like yeah. it did, or yeah. uh, any, any, any of these things yeah. can happen. And uh, so, <laughs> I still don't understand why we are going to, um, in, in a sense, de, de, uh, just seem to be debunking uh, something that actually, an agency that actually brought uh, 
industry to Hawaii. Uh, and uh, this high-tech development corporation thing is really, so, really They bothering. need support. So when you were there, you know, what were some of the things that, as chairman of that agency, you feel oh, good about? They're encouraging entrepreneurship. They're encouraging manufacturing. Uh, they were, gee, they had uh, seven or eight programs that were uh, quite active and successful to try to draw people into uh, a tech state of mind. They were supporting tech in every way they could. Um, and, of course, it was still a limited budget. In the legal administration, she didn't like to give them a lot of money. They never had a lot of money while I was there. But, but actually, uh, there should be plenty of money. We should throw money at, at uh, developing a tech industry because that's where our kids are. Uh, if we can get them to stay here, what's that worth? You know, at one time, okay, way back when, and I'm saying this in, in, with a bit of uh, pride and a little bit of s sadness, I guess, we actually had a policy that we would set aside at least 5% of our budget every year to support innovation and technology. Now, I'm assuming that doesn't exist anymore. Well, the no, our not, current governor has different priorities for his budget, and those, yeah. those set assigns don't exist. I think yeah. we, we provide... But we this governor seems to be very interested in technology. He's interested, but he's not engaged. Really? So he's disengaged. As a matter of fact, he's cutting funding for a lot of, of these things that you're talking That's about. That's really unfortunate. Now, I guess at this point in time, I'm going to take a short, um, going to have a short break, and we'll be right back to talk about this most interesting story, well, industry. And uh, it's not really uh, making me happy. <laughs> okay, I need to work on this. <laughs> Aloha and Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just gonna scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. <laughs> Burning oil. Though. Aloha. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. By the way, if you have a question for our guests, please call us at 808-374-2014. And today we have Dave and Jay, who uh, we're here talking about technology, something that's not normally heard on in, in the yeah, show. But it is our middle name, John. But That's it right. does <laughs> cross over with the topics that we normally talk about, which is uh, politics and, mm -hmm. and how much uh, we are doing to support the idea of a new industry in Hawaii. Now, but there are good stories going on. I mean, in energy, at least. I, I've heard that, <coughs> for example, at uh, Keaholi, where we were just, uh, just talking about, they are starting to develop um, act workable forms of, uh, of what they call wave energy, I guess. Or wave action generation? Right. Right, that's a, that's a solar tube with, uh, that floats in the water and as the water comes in and out of the tube, it spins an internal propeller that goes back and forth and because of that kinetic energy, you're able to uh, draw electricity from that. So is that something that we have a future doing? Or, no, I don't uh, think so. Any of this new stuff? Because I know they're doing that in Japan. I Currently, it's a little bit too large and too expensive. They've been talking yeah. about that kind of thing for a long time, but the reality is that if you wanted to make money and tech hyphen energy entrepreneurship. You'd be focused around electronics, about information technology, about refining um, hydrogen uh, so and fuel cells. So let's talk about cells. refining hydrogen for a little while, because that has always been put out as the panacea for the way that we consume um, 
you know, oil, petroleum. I mean, well, it's a wonderful it. concept. It's one of the most abundant uh, elements in the universe, and the byproduct is fresh water. Right. So, it, what a it great thing a lot to do. Of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, are we doing anything with uh, hydrogen? Uh, HNEI at the university is working on fuel cells and other hydrogen projects, but they're not nearly ready for prime time. Um, there are people working on um, the electronics for grid connection. Uh, that's pretty valuable right now. And just this week, they had the Verge, just last week, they had the Verge conference in Waikiki where a lot of these guys got together and showed you their new technologies. So to uh, explain this, explain this so that... Energy is technology. Yeah, I understand. And, and so, uh, but explain it so that people who listen to this show <laughs> would understand it. <laughs> okay, well, just, just a, small, a small vignette of that is that you have to balance, uh, you know, demand and load. Right. And you have the uh, utility with its own grid, and you have people who have maybe solar on their roofs. Right, and, right. And you, and you have to, you know, balance it so that you're not wasting anything, so that you're most well, efficient. Well, isn't that a storage issue? Storage is a big Not part always. of that. No, we had a we had a power outage on the East Coast just a few years back because one uh, ballast on an electrical grid blew in Ohio and took down the entire eastern seaboard, including Virginia and Washington D.C. So it's also a trans. It's an infrastructure problem. We have an entrenched, very old infrastructure in the United States in general, and Hawaii is part of that. Well, so when we add new elements to it, we have to accommodate that. Let, let me tell you, I was at a energy conference recently, and actually I've been going to the, that thing for years. And, you know, so I, I absorb a little bit of all of this. And one of the policy issues that really interests me was the fact that uh, the, the panelists, actually the one, of the one of the panelists who at this moment happened to be our newest member of the PUC, uh, and Jennifer I, Potter. And she's fantastic. She I mean, I, I was so impressed by her and her presentation and her credentials and, and the rest of it. But we were talking about it, and in the co course of the conversation, what I found out was that with all the solar panels that have placed been placed on homes in Hawaii, that we are actually uh, creating during the daytime something like 500 megawatts of power, which is much more uh, than uh, needed just to, you know, do the homes. And what was happening then was that the, the creation of all of this energy was having an impact on Hawaiian Electric, in, which is the monopoly that provides power to most homes in Hawaii or in businesses. And uh, the, the Hawaiian Electric has these power generators that have to run at a certain level in order to be efficient. So if they run less than or don't generate what is required, it somehow it, that's a bad thing, you know, and it, 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 so they need to be efficient. All of this is interesting, and it was interesting to the techie types and the, and the type. The part that bothered me as a matter of public policy, though, which is what I'm interested, you know, as a, as a person interested in, was that the solution to this problem, the problem, quote, unquote, of creating too much energy during the daytime and, and that it would affect how much we would run these generators, was to essentially dump it, was to say that the energy that came from these homes would no longer be incorporated into the grid that provided electricity. And I thought to myself, there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that public policy-wise when we end up throwing away energy, essentially. But we don't do that here in Oahu. Well, we, the, the only the only curtailing that's going on now is the neighbor islands for wind. No, for I'm talking about for solar. They they, they are they, they are building storage systems, and the technology we're talking about as technology that could be useful for entre, entrepreneurs, make small companies and people here, you know, people with Dave trains or people who otherwise know about engineering, electrical engineering. Well, those technologies would help make it uh, efficient. So that nothing gets dumped, nothing. Well, is, I hope so. Is, is I hope so. But the rule right now, the rule right now is that the excess energy is not incorporated into the grid. 
And the reason for that is because they're so. Uh, uh, it would seem to me what the rule ought to be, and if I was still in a position to call my cabinet together, I would have done that that day. The rule ought to be how we solve this problem and keep I think, the I think you're talking about what happens at the homeowner level. If he has all this photovoltaic on his roof, and, and he needs to, and what happens? And he is, doesn't have any batteries, and he hasn't spent the money for batteries. Then he can't use it all during the, during the hot sun. Yeah, and what ha what what the well, original plan was that the, the, that energy, that extra energy, is go goes back to the grid, and they at at one point in time it had to be taken back into the grid, but now the utility is now able to apparently say no. I don't want your energy, and if you can't store it, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about the net energy but, metering, right? Uh, and what what, what 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 we need to do, it seems to me, like is find a solution that if you got 500 megawatts of energy, you know, why are we continuing to foster? And that I guess that was my question. Well, you run into another problem here. So, say you wanted to store all that energy, we only have a few options available for batteries: and lead, nickel, cadmium, and lithium ion. That's the only technology we've, we and we've been using the same stuff for 30, 40 years. Well, 100 years actually for we, some batteries. We haven't improved battery technology to keep up with any of our electronic industries, and that's one thing that Elon Musk is trying well, to work it, out. It wait, wait, wait. There are, there are, are batteries consumed. available that can store all the energy you're talking about. But they come with an it's environmental concern. It's just very concern. expensive business to put them in, and it requires technology to balance them, as, well, I, as I mentioned. If I, if so I, we, could, we could do all of this, but the homeowners don't want to spend it. There's no credit right now. I'm not sure. They didn't do anything in the last year. No energy this year. credit anymore, yeah. No energy credit for batteries. Um, and, um, and finally, the, the, the government, uh, rather the utility and the government are not really encouraging batteries. So it's, yeah, it's a problem. I, I, I don't know whether... If you had batteries, then all of this would not be a problem. I, I, I don't know whether the issue is batteries as much, and it may be in the actuality instead, uh, or is the problem of storage. And in my point of view, from a, a public policy point of view, it seems that an, an, any policy, uh, whatever the justification for it in the immediate zone is, any policy that undercuts uh, a, a different kind of energy is uh, something you've got to look at. And if I, as I said, if I was there, the policy ought to be, how do we solve this problem? How do we take advantage of the fact that we may have enough energy to light up the whole uh, city being dumped. It, yeah, I think, I think Jay was saying if we had the batteries, we could do it. So, yeah. I, I, when I was talking to when I was talking to to this young person, this the new PSC that what was her name <laughs> again? Oh, Jennifer Potter. Yeah, Jennifer. And, and, and she, we were talking about these kinds of uh, structural uh, impediments, you know, and uh, it, it really, that, this I understand, because I think that, uh, if nothing else, see, what apparently was happening is that, in effect, what we're doing is protecting those generators that burn petroleum. We're making sure that they keep being useful, and meanwhile, we're doing this Utility other Utility is trying to organize batteries all over town. Batteries are storage. That is how you store well, yeah, the I'm, energy I'm that's not that's, being used. That's how we store it today. I don't know if someday somebody is going to, in your, in your classroom, is going to come up with a new idea. But, wouldn't uh, that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice, yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, Public policy is not following the dream, is it? Well, we need more progressive uh, minds in office, in my if, opinion. If you go back to the technology issue, public policy, there should be public policy. There is public policy, theoretically, to build a tech industry in the state. Energy is kind of tech to offer the uh, incentives to young people to create businesses and to stay here and make money and this to be a center of technology and energy, energy technology, I should say. Um, and, and if our state has a policy like that, it's really hard to find it. 
if our state wants to achieve those goals, it's, the state isn't taking any action to do that. And it's regrettable because through your administration, through Burns, Ariyoshi, you, Caetano, and all the way forward until Linda Lingle, actually, we had the policy and we were well, taking steps you know, to effectuate it. I, I wanted to get back into this, and I think we'll do another program or two on the idea of the intersect between public policy, technology, and, and energy. Thank you very much for uh, listening, everybody. Uh, we stretched it as far as we can go. <laughs> Aloha, and see you again at the next Talk Story to, with John Wahey. <laughs> <laughs>